In today's video, you are going to learn how to create this incline scroll effect in Framer without writing a single line of code. In order to follow along with this video, all you need is a free Framer account that you can create with the link in the description. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So the effect was inspired by Andreas Antonsson, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but but yeah, Andreas, and this portfolio is actually amazing. So I was inspired by this work here, and um, I was wondering if it's possible with Framer. And as you can see, it's pretty much possible. So let's jump in Framer and let's see how it's done. We basically start with a desktop breakpoint, which is set to a black color. And I'm gonna also make sure that the height is a bit larger. So let's make it 3,500. And then I'm gonna start by drawing a frame here. Oh, and also let's make sure that the breakpoint is a stack with a vertical direction and the distribute set to start with a zero gap. And let's make this first frame with fill and the height 100 VH. And I'm gonna remove the fill color here because we don't need that. And then I'm gonna set it to sticky because this first frame needs to stay on top of the viewport as we scroll down the website because this effect is achieved by being a bit tricky. So let's rename this to main and then I'm gonna also make sure that the index is removed here because that might cause some issues in the long run. Then I'm gonna turn this main frame into a stack and inside of this main frame, we're gonna have another frame, which we'll be used to wrap the images in. And this will be a fixed width of 1200, and the height will be 100 with H, and it will not have a fill color. And this will also be a stack with a vertical direction, um, the distribute will be set to start, and we're gonna care about the gap and the padding a little bit later. So let's rename these two images because we will have the images in this frame. And basically inside of this images frame, I'm gonna create more frames and these will have the images. The width will be fill and the height will be 600. This will be the first image, so I'm gonna rename this to one. And I'm gonna just find an image from Unsplash here inside of Framer. So this will be great for a first image. And I'm just gonna duplicate this five times because we will have five images. I'm gonna rename all these frames to the appropriate numbers. And now as you can see, we have very little gap between the images, so I'm gonna increase that a bit. I'm gonna go with 132. And I'm gonna also make sure that we have a top padding here, which will be around 250 maybe. Okay, so if we preview this project right now, you can see that basically <laughs> nothing really happens and even the top frame which needs to be sticky isn't sticky is because i forgot to set the desktop breakpoint to overflow visible uh, that's because sticky positioning requires all parents frames overflow set to visible so now if you give it a preview you can see that now it's sticky but still nothing works because we just have these images inside of the images frame and we need to make them scroll somehow so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna select all of them and we're gonna apply a scroll transform effect and this scroll transform effect will happen on scroll and the from state will be one opacity one scale so basically we don't change anything and uh, here on the two state we will have one opacity one scale However, we will change the offset here. So as you can see, as I'm changing this value, the Y value, these images are moving up. So I'm gonna have minus 3,500 here. And now if we preview this project, you can see that as I scroll on the website, these images are nicely moving up and down. So this is already looking really nice. So now you can imagine what we need to do. We have to select the images frame because all of the images are inside of this images frame. So I'm just gonna make sure that this whole thing is rotated. Uh, the rotation will be minus seven. And the, the good thing is that if we give it a preview now, all these images are still moving, but now that this frame is rotated, 
everything is kind of moving to the top left corner. But as you can see, on the top left corner, there is some overflow issues there. So the images are being cut off at the top left corner. As you can see, the images frame now ends here because of the rotation. And all we need to do is to set the overflow from hidden to visible. So the images will also shown when they move out of the frame. So as you can see now, these images are nicely moving to the top left corner. It's already looking really nice. However, as you can see on the finished animation, on the sides we have this kind of curve that adds a more 3D look to the whole effect. So we're gonna do that. The way we will achieve that is by drawing really, really big circles. So first of all, let's make big frames. I'm gonna use 5500 for the width and the height. And I'm gonna use a radius of 50%. So we get this nice big circle and the color will be matching the background color of the side. So it will be full black. And now I'm going to make a wrapping frame inside of the main frame that we will wrap these circles in. So I just created the frame here and I copied it by pressing command and X and I'm going to select the main and I'm going to paste it in here. And this will be set to absolute positioning. I'm gonna deactivate all these pins and I'm gonna make sure that this is in the middle of the frame by pressing option H and option V. And I'm gonna remove this to mask because this will act as kind of a mask covering the images. And I'm gonna make sure that the width is 1200 and the height is 800. And then I'm gonna remove the fill color and we're gonna set the overflow to visible. So now we have the wrapping frame for the big circle so i'm gonna just again press command and x to copy it and i'm gonna paste it inside of the mask frame so now as you can see it's right here maybe i'm gonna use a different image for the first image because we cannot really see how it's cropping or masking the first image so i'm gonna use a white colored frame here and i'm gonna move around this circle until I find the best position for it. So as you can see, I'm trying to move it to the right side of the mask frame, somewhere around here, it will be good. If you copy these values here, you'll get the same placement. And also make sure to activate the top and the bottom pin here. And then I'm gonna just copy this circle by pressing Command and D. And then I'm gonna move it to the left side. Okay, so now as you can see, I moved it to the left, but it doesn't really look as on the original effect. So we need to change these values. The top value will be minus 1950 and the bottom value will be minus 2750. So now as you can see, this is exactly what we are looking for. So if we give this a preview, now as you can see, that the images are being masked down really nicely. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the images here. Okay, so I changed the images. So if we give this a preview, now as you can see that this effect is working just as expected. So you can, you know, spice this out with different texts and, uh, you know, some gradients and all sorts of different things. I'm gonna leave a remix link in the description so you're gonna be able to play around with this original file but the most important thing is this scroll effect here that we used and the rotated images frame here so yeah basically that's the effect so that's how you can create an inclined scroll effect in Framer without writing a single line of code. As I mentioned, make sure to check out the description to find the link for the Remix link, Framer University and other useful resources to learn everything about Framer. That's it for this tutorial, make sure to like it and subscribe for more and I'm gonna see you in the next one.